Well, speak of turning the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Guys, I want to share something with you <laughs> that I find incredible. Um, <clears throat> last night I was sitting outside on the balcony in the garden and I said, Daddy, I want to write something nice just for you. <laughs> and this came, boom. See? The whole of last night and then this morning, today it worked, it was Monday it worked. I was trying to digest um, these things, you know, telephone was going all the time. So I decided to try and formulate it for you. These, <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> so you see, people, even most Christians, um, read the story of creation once or a few times only and they think, okay, that was it, okay? I got it in the pocket. Genesis 1 was 1. In the beginning, God. So, and that's it. It has no further reality or it's, it's not worth another thought. Um, yeah, and then people say, you know, yeah, because it's a, a done deal kind of thing. Adam and Eve were created from the hand of God, you know, they say. But me, I'm only human. Um, here, let me show you some pictures of my uh, parents, and, and they're also only humans. They created me, you know. Those are my parents. That is my father. Okay, first mist biggest mistake, biggest mistake. So, what happened in the Garden of Eden? The, the father, the creator, our daddy, took dry earth. He mixed it with some sight giving spit and some dew from heaven for there was no rain back then. The earth was perfect. It was just the dew going up in the morning, you know. And I believe those are the cells that make up our bodies <laughs> under the microscope, you know. You can see all these dew drops moving around, moving around. Each one different and alive, you know. I believe that is the dew and the spit from from our daddy so but still adam's chest didn't move he didn't move for heart he alone our father our biological father our spiritological father only can give this and through his breath going out it's like even he's full of um, carbon dioxide out breath creates life. Why? Because he is life and he cannot, cannot, cannot but create life. Even when he exhales. <laughs> I find that fascinating. You know? Life comes from him. His breath, his wind, even his carbon dioxide is life. Look what we are breathing. Look what we live of. We are his children. And then with carried on to this beautiful um, Hebrew word ruach, his spirit, is carried, is transported his mind into us and his heart. Heart actually in the Bible means, in the word of daddy means mind. He explains it to us. He says, when I use the word heart, I mean mind. Why? Because you are spiritual beings. You are not a pumping bum 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 machine. The heart of your mind, you know, the center of your mind. And uh, so, from this Adam, from this first being, from this man, Know, this dusty creature out of dust with his spit and spirit out of this he forms Eve okay biology is, is a modern word it, you know it sounds like a sales pitch biology this ology is good for you no that one is bad try this ology no this ology is better no no I like this doctor ology here so <clears throat> um, biology is is a modern in God's eyes, we are dust. Why? I think because he sees the truth. He doesn't say you dust, you know, like in a symbolic sense. Hey, he says, no, no, really, just a reality check. You are dust. Anything that resembles life within your dust is me. 
Our so-called biology is the living spirit of God in us. And that we call biology, you know, ripped it out of the hands of God. From this dust you were made, and to this dust you will return. So this is the problem in our thinking, thinking that this moment of creation was a one-time thing. As if our parents are our creators now. Back then it was God, now our parents are our creators. Poor, wrong, you know, it's a big mistake to think like that. You see, Adam was dust, Eve was dust, parents are dust, we are dust, our children are dust, dust, dust. From dust we are made to dust our bodies will return after a dusty, <laughs> stormy life in between. And we are dust. Just go up high enough and look down. It looks like a dust storm, you know, moving to and fro. God says in the Bible, in the Word, in the in the end of the age, you know, people will be running and moving through. It's a dust storm. We are a dust storm, especially today. So, today, this very day, and by the way, yesterday, tomorrow again, and on and on, 350,000 times worldwide, God, the Creator, our Heavenly Father, was busy in the hidden Garden of Eden, in the wombs of 350,000 earthly mothers. You see, this was the punishment of Eve. God threw Eve out of the garden by putting carefully, lovingly, piece by piece, the garden into her. The womb is where the Garden of Eden now resides because what does the Garden of Eden, what is the main thing when comes, when, that comes into your mind when you, when you hear the Garden of Eden? Creation. Creation and the Garden of Eden is, is one and the same thing means one and the same thing. That is where life is created. The womb is the hidden garden of Eden. The womb is the place where never-ending streams of living waters cover, give life and flow. It's a description of the womb, the garden of Eden now within. Imagine what a kind of place that must have been. Imagine a... A baby as Adam being in the Garden of Eden, this environment can just grow. That is what the Garden of Eden was meant for, to grow and grow and grow and then to grow and be birthed into a new life. New life was always a plan of the creation and rebirth. Because God has so much to offer, you know. So, Eden... The, and then and then you wonder why men are sex crazy. They want back into the garden and they will build the greatest Trump Towers for it. To return to Eden. They don't know the reason why they are so sex crazy. You are sex crazy, and I had a phase like that in my life. I think many men do. Where you don't know what is driving you to woman. And it's the hidden garden within. It has been revealed. It has been. I don't know. It has been covered from our minds. I, I think Daddy gave me a big present, you know, to to see it, to understand it. And then comes birth, as an Eve. Every man or woman is is Eve. That is why the bride of why that's why it's called the bride of Christ and not the Adam of Christ. It's speaking Eve is creation, humanity. We are all Eve. We are all inheritors of having to make a choice. There's your proof. There's your proof. We are all inheritors of choosing a gazillion times a day this or that. We are all children of Eve. Yeah. 
The story of the Garden of Eden isn't past, it's more alive now than ever before, more than 350 times more every day. It's written anew again and again, over and over, 350,000 times more or less a day. Because today, 350,000 times the Creator entered the hidden garden. He doesn't just, it's not only possible for him to be busy in one garden. He enters 350,000 gardens, Garden of Eden, with his full presence and his full creative power. And then from the path, the father, he takes sperm dust and he mixes it with cell clay. And then he combines it and knits it together, as the psalmist says. In the mother's, in my mother's womb, you knit me together. You knew me before I was born. You named me. You, you know. In the protected garden, and today it's called the womb, and there he breathes his life, his life into the unmost, uh, in, into the innermost unborn little being there, as he did it six thousand years ago with Adam and Eve in the great womb, in the womb we were supposed to have spent eternity in, but we, we, chose to, uh, to, um, we chose to leave the womb of the Creator, <laughs> where life can grow, for something else. We, yes, yeah. We were thrown out of the womb and the womb was thrown into us. We are now the guardians of the Garden of Eden. <laughs>